The QSYS User Control Interface, or UCI for short, provides a means for an end user to control any part of a QSYS design via a network device, such as a QSYS User Control touchscreen, or a Windows-based PC, or an iOS device. I mean, the choice is yours as to how much or how little you want your user of the UCI to control the system. And the creativity that you use to design your UCI can go a long way to enhance the user's total experience. Don't worry, there's no programming experience required to make a UCI. You can build robust UCI screens simply by dragging any QSE DSP or control element from your schematic into your UCI editor. Lucky for you, you don't need to learn a new platform in order to build these UCIs, and you don't need a separate control hardware to run the UCIs. All that is required is to add a UCI deployment feature license to your core processor, which will allow you to deploy your UCI to any of these devices. In this video, we're going to go over the steps to creating and editing the basic properties of a UCI. Your first step is to open the UCI editor, which you can get to by navigating to the left side pane. The first thing you'll notice is that there's already a UCI here entitled Inventory Status which displays the current status of every inventory item in your design. These are categorized by the location you provided in the properties. You cannot remove, rename, or edit this UCI. This screen is what we call the UCI editor. The UCI interface itself has replaced our main schematic page, and you'll see a new side panel which lists all the pages, layers, and objects in your UCI. We'll talk about those in a minute. First, We'll create a new UCI by pressing the plus icon in the UCI panel. You now have a blank UCI with one blank page in it. We can add almost any control from our design into this blank UCI space, as well as a variety of external images. To add a control, simply open the Components Control Panel, select the controls that you want, and copy and paste them into your UCI window. I use the Control-C and the Control-V shortcut, but you could use the right-click menu to select, copy, and paste. Alternatively, you could drag these controls up to the UCI's Name tab and then drop them onto your UCI. Or, and this is what I usually do, you could undock one of your windows by dragging its tab from the main screen. You could either move this to a second computer monitor, or you could split your screen by releasing the mouse button onto one of these four split screen icons. Splitting your screen makes it extremely easy to drag controls from your schematic onto your UCI. But before you add too much to your UCI, you should make sure that your panel is sized for the right device. If you select your UCI's name and look at its properties, choose the panel type from the available options. Once you change your selection, the dimensions of your UCI editor will automatically adjust to the new device. This will change the canvas size, but it doesn't rescale any of the objects. So be sure to do this first or you may end up needing to reorganize all of your UCI elements for the correct dimension if you first built it with an incorrect device selected. There are a variety of QSE touchscreen controllers on the list, as well as iPhones, iPads, and generic aspect ratio options for displaying on a network PC. For some of these devices, be sure to specify if you want to work in a horizontal landscape mode or a vertical portrait mode. For most UCIs, you won't be able to fit every control onto a single screen, even if you wanted to. Instead, let's add a new page to your UCI by pressing the plus button here at the bottom and selecting Add Page. Now that we have a fresh UCI page, we can add more content to this page. But now that your UCI has multiple pages, you'll need to decide how you want the user to navigate between them. Now, by default, Navigation tabs are added to the side. You can customize some basic properties of these pages here on the right. You can change your title to rename them. You could 
select an icon that will appear on the page tab. And you can select a fill color, which will be used as both the page background and the tab color. You can also adjust the depth of this tab window by dragging its border with your mouse. To further customize these tabs, let's select the UCI itself and adjust its properties. You can change their location to dock their navigation bar to the left, right, bottom, or top. You can also change the font and add a colorful stroke or border with these fields here. However, if you don't like any of these options, there are other ways to let your user navigate between these pages as well. The user can actually navigate between pages by swiping left or right on the touchscreen rather than using the navigation buttons. In this case, you might want to change the tab locations to none since we're not using them. On the other hand, you could disable the swipe ability by finding the swipe disable property and activating it. Now we have a UCI without navigation tabs or swipe ability, but this might be exactly what you want. You see, an important thing to note about using the page tabs or the swipe method is that these give the user access to every single page on your UCI. But let's say you have a maintenance page that you don't want a casual user to stumble upon. Or perhaps you have a large number of pages and you want to really customize the path between them. In this case, you want to use navigation buttons. You'll find these in the layout branch on the schematic library in the UCI folder. The navigation button can be placed anywhere on your UCI and you can change its appearance just like any other button. Its main property you need to adjust is which page you want to open when it's pressed. This allows you to create your own custom navigation section and limit the user's navigation based on the options you want to present. It's also worth noting that you can write any label you want on these navigation buttons while the navigation tabs only display the page's actual name. There are a few more properties here that we should mention, such as the Enable Button Swipe property. This property allows you to activate multiple buttons without your finger leaving the touchscreen. Imagine a paging interface where you can select multiple zones for your announcement. If Button Swipe is disabled, then you need to select each of those zones one by one. But if button swipe is enabled, you can make one continuous swipe and every button you touch along the way will engage. Let's also look at the private property. When we talk about deploying these UCIs in a later video, you'll learn that a Windows device or an iOS device can manually select from all available UCIs present on the network. If you want to exclude a particular UCI from that list, engage private here. That means that your UCI can only be displayed by a QSC touchscreen that it's assigned to. This is not the same as restricting access to a specific user. If you want to require a user to log on to a UCI, that is accomplished in the administrator tool. Navigate to the user control interfaces tab and select the UCI you want to protect. Engage the require user logon button and the UCI will display a keypad screen instead of the UCI. A user must input their custom PIN number as configured in the user list in order to access this UCI. To log off, you should also provide them with a log off button found in the layout UCI folder. And a few more things since we're looking at them. The clean screen button will disable your UCI for 30 seconds, allowing you to physically clean your screen. And the URL button allows you to specify a web address. Pressing this button will launch the viewer's default native web browser and load your hyperlink. This is obviously only available on an internet-connected tablet or PC, not on a QSE touchscreen. So that's the basic structural layout of how to add UCIs and adjust their properties and navigation. Go ahead and take a quick break if you'd like. In the next videos, we'll take a look at how much further you can customize their appearances and, and then actually deploy them onto a touchscreen. We'll see you next time. <laughs>